SVB and Signature Bank. Who are these banks? SVB, as the name suggests, SVB is headquartered in Silicon Valley and had a strong focus on providing banking services to technology and life science companies. The bank was founded in 1983, was 17th largest bank in the U.S. Over the years, it has built a reputation as a premier bank for entrepreneurs and innovators. It offers a range of specialized services tailored to the needs of startups and tech companies. These include venture debt, venture capital, and private equity services, as well as cash management and international banking solutions. As for Signature Bank, is headquartered in New York, was founded in 2001 was the seventh largest bank in the U.S. The bank has strong connection to crypto community. It is also worth to note that Signature Bank had built a good reputation even among financial analysts. The mound with a pitch on one lesser known name in the space that could be a total home run. Welcome, Ava Ados. She's the Chief Investment Strategist at ER Shares. Ava, you like Signature Bank. Why? We like banks because in an inflationary environment, they can pass along costs and increase their margins. And we like Signature because it's not only a bank, but also a great growth entrepreneurial story. This is a bank that started 21 years ago with 50 million in assets, and they managed to grow them to 100 billion organically and that's very unusual in this area where most banks growth requisition so we like the growth exceptional growth a net income margin of 46 percent in fact if you look at 155 global competitors in the space this bank ranks as uh, in the top five when it's and when it comes to its net income margin and it's growing it by 63 percent a year it's already had such a strong run uh, up a hundred and more than 40% over the last year, the best performing name in the S&P financial sector over the last year. Why has it had such strong outperformance and does that, how can that continue? That's right. So last year it was up 140%. Uh, as you said, one of the top performers. Um, but we believe they still have room to run. And the reason is they have very large deposit balances. They have over 60 billion in deposits. And right now they are generating 0%. When we, first, when we start seeing the first interest rate hike, for every 1% interest rate increase, this bank is going to be adding about 6% to its free tax income. So we, we can only, only be even more bullish going forward. Ava, thank you. It's good to talk to you. Having another good day up 2%. So our traders buying Ava's pitch on Signature Bank. Tim. Look, I, I think Ava crushed it. That ball went straight, straight over the center field fence because this is a stock that has really crushed it and outperformed the XLF. But um, their digital asset growth, their, their, their crypto loans, and you know this has got a lot of fintech in it too. It should be treated as a growth stock, but I like the sector it's in. Mike. Hey, I mean, take a look at this thing trading about 20 times forward earnings. I mean, on a price to book value, maybe a little bit above their peers. But with this thing growing in the high 20s, uh, I'd have to say, yeah, she, she did hit that one out of the park. I buy them on uh, Signature Bank. I like it. Karen, what about you? I'm going to, even though I'm a value investor, and this is hardly value, but there is value there. It's just not cheap. <laughs> I'm going to buy, and then that is my illegible signature. Um, I thought it was an excellent pitch. Hold Clearly it up a little not, higher. They're not your run-of-the-mill bank. Oh, hold it up a little higher. Okay. That's my illegible signature. Oh, signature. I think, though, that it's, it is sort of like a fintech. And I think that, you know, the growth they've had, the margins that they have, it's expensive. One other thing, this could be a nice little acquisition for somebody. Pete, four for four? Well, I got to say...
Yeah, I think it's a sweep, uh, Sarah. When I look at this and I look at the organic growth and I look at the digital growth and I look at the loan growth and all of that, the only issue I have is what Karen mentioned, which is when I look at the price to book, or I think it may be Mike or Karen, uh, the price to book is a little bit high. Outside of that, everything looks pristine. The balance sheet is awesome. That's a, that's a home run. What caused the collapse? SVB collapse has been for a long time in making. The bank went from nine months without the CRO, chief risk officer. As a result, proper precautions were not taken to ensure that sound systemic stress test was carried out. This being making sure that the bank had enough liquidity in reserves for their operations. I mean, even a personal finance advisor would tell a common layman that for his or her financial well-being, a minimum liquidity reserve of six months is a must for their needs. SVB March reserves were invested in long-term bonds, some 10 years or more. This is well when interest rates are stable, but with the current inflation state, this is not the case. Most of bonds held by SVB were bought when rates were close to between 0 and 2.5%. The bank was not well positioned when J. Powell started a series of rate hikes. This wouldn't have been an issue if SVB had enough liquidity reserve at hand to satisfy daily operations, as it would have been in a position to wait it out until these bonds mature. Unfortunately, the time is not SVB ally. To add fuel to the fire, at some point in the middle of all of this saga, executives at SVB started to sell their shares held in the company. It is obvious that they were preparing themselves for upcoming calamity. As for Signature Bank collapse, came as a surprise to many. Just recently, financial TV personality were re commanding Signature Bank shares as a buy. They pass the GARP test. So let's start with number one. Let's start with Signature Bank. This is a New York-based commercial bank, but it's got uh, 36 private client offices sprinkled across the New York metro area, California, and North Carolina. The thing about Signature is that it's a business-oriented bank, and to the extent that they have a consumer business, it's focused on the wealthy namely business owners and senior executives who do a lot of business and you can make a lot of money working. This is not a stock we've covered too often, although I mentioned it in January because it was the fifth best performing SP 500 last year. I went over the top guys. At the time, I told you Signature had run too much. Recommended waiting for a better entry point, just finding a bank stock that was cheaper on a book value basis. Well, I was going to call a stock down 17% when we did that. Signature bank corrupts came as a result from lack of confidence by FDIC, meaning Federal Depo Deposit Insurance Corporation. Nearly 90% of bank assets were uninsurable by FDIC. A big chunk of these assets was no doubt in cryptos. Signature bank demise is tightly coupled with what happened to Silvergate Collapse, another bank friendly to crypto community. Regulators reacted on a signature bank to prevent systemic contagion in the banking sector. What is next for these banks and their customers? At the moment, these bank's customers are protected by measures put in place by FDIC to make sure that they have access to their deposits and bank services. As for these two banks, for now, 
they have FDIC appointed executives to ensure smooth daily operation of the bank. As for what next, these banks will be auctioned off the same way as what happened to SVB UK over the weekend when HSBC bought SVB UK for a pound, just over one dollar at auction.